He gave us strength in time of trouble, wisdom in time of uncertainty, and sharing in time of happiness. Who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. He will always be by our side. The 1960s was a time of significant change for minorities in the United States. Significant leaders such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Cesar Chavez were both extremely important in representing people who longed for change. Although each of these civil rights leaders was extremely influential, they needed allies within the government in order to gain attention on the national scale. Robert F. Kennedy's leadership within the civil rights movement of the 1960s helped to progress the country toward equality and shaped his legacy into one that focused on the betterment of the human race. Robert Francis Kennedy was born on November 20, 1925, to parents Joseph Kennedy and Rose Fitzgerald. Like his siblings, John and Edward, Robert was encouraged to pursue a life of public service from a very young age. Robert stayed current with world events, and as soon as he turned 18, enlisted for service in the Navy, where he served from 1944 to 1946. Following his service, he decided to further his education by graduating from Harvard with a bachelor's degree in political science in 1948. He then decided to obtain his law degree by attending the University of Virginia, completing his bar exam in 1951. For the next decade, Kennedy worked extensively as a lawyer in Washington, D.C., aiding in the senatorial campaign of John Kennedy in 1952 and working for presidential candidate Adlai Stevenson during the 1956 elections. RFK's diligent work in the 1950s helped him to gain the experience he needed in order to fight in favor of equality. His brother John's victory in the 1960 presidential election was a milestone in furthering Robert's influence on the national scale. Robert and John had both grown very close over the course of their lives, and Robert acted as John's closest friend and advisor. As a result, he was appointed as the Attorney General of the United States on January 20, 1961. Kennedy's tenure as Attorney General was defined by his unwavering support for civil rights and his opposition to corrupt union leaders such as Jimmy Hoffa. In 1961 and 62, Kennedy was in contact with both MLK and his wife, Coretta Scott King, as demonstrations of nonviolence persisted in racially tense areas of the South. Kennedy furthered his fight for equality by calling for more diverse employment, especially in the government. He even encouraged Vice President Johnson specifically to desegregate his staff. When asked in 1962 what the biggest problem he faced as Attorney General was, he replied, Civil rights. Robert's passion for civil rights put the issue at the forefront of the president's attention, and hence became more of a national issue. Martin Luther King's freedom rides in the South also were supported by Kennedy. Kennedy was able to obtain special busing in order to continue freedom rides around the southern United States. Furthermore, when King and his followers were attacked by a white mob in the First Baptist Church in Alabama, RFK called MLK to tell him to remain in the church until the National Guard and the U.S. Marshals could escort King and his followers out of the church to safety. On November 22, 1963, tragedy struck the Kennedy family when Robert's brother and closest friend President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. For months, RFK mourned the death of his brother. Rarely did he speak in public about it, until August 27th, 1964. He was asked to speak in honor of the fallen president. However, he was delayed by 22 minutes of thunderous applause at the Democratic National Convention. His legacy continued to be defined by tragedy. However, he never ceased to serve his fellow citizens. As senator in 1965, Kennedy attempted to serve those he called the disaffected, the impoverished, and the excluded. He further aligned himself with the civil rights movement and its leaders and acted as a civil rights leader within the Democratic Party. Kennedy supported desegregation busing, integration of all public facilities, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the anti-poverty social programs to increase education, offer opportunities for employment, and provide health care for African Americans. Senator Kennedy's next battleground for civil rights occurred in the fields of Delano, California, where Cesar Chavez attempted to achieve equal rights for migrant workers during the grape strikes and boycotts of the 1960s. The farm workers have suffered, and have suffered and uh, grown much more slowly economically than any other segment of our society. It's terribly unfair and very unreasonable and uh, very, very unjust. This growing conflict in Delano began to be heard around the country, leading Robert Kennedy to be involved in a series of hearings of the Senate Subcommittee on Migratory Labor. While in Delano, he became a friend of Chavez and his union, and ultimately took the battle to the national stage. 
Robert Robert Kennedy had to remind the local the local sheriff and the local DA to read the Constitution of the United States. How can you go arrest somebody if they haven't violated the law? They're ready to violate the law, in other words. Could I suggest in the interim period of time, in the luncheon period of time, that the sheriff and the district attorney read the Constitution of the United States? Three months later, in June of 1966, Bobby traveled with his wife Ethel to Cape Town, South Africa. There he delivered a series of speeches promoting the progression of equality and condemned the system of apartheid that plagued so many of the black inhabitants of the country. Kennedy truly believed that equality for all people did not stop at the borders of the United States. Perhaps most famously, RFK delivered the Day of Affirmation speech at Cape Town University in which he gave South Africa's oppressed hope and courage to challenge the apartheid system. Returning to the United States, Kennedy continued his journey as a senator from New York. That was, until 1968, when he was struck with a series of triumphs and tragedies. On March 10th of 1968, Kennedy returned to Delano, California to once again meet with his friend Cesar Chavez. Chavez was in the midst of a 25-day hunger strike when Kennedy arrived to give his support. RFK publicly appeared with Chavez and attended Sunday Mass when Chavez finally broke his hunger strike by partaking in Holy Communion. Senator Robert Kennedy was very vocal and visible about supporting the Barbican movement and uh, he was uh, always there uh, when we needed him. This movement as a result gained more national attention and the farm workers were ultimately successful in bettering the lives of migratory workers. Six days later on March 16, 1968, Robert Kennedy announced his presidential candidacy against the incumbent Lyndon B. Johnson. This acted as a turning point for Kennedy and for many in the United States, as many believed that RFK would act in favor of the minorities that he helped during his time as senator. One month later, in April 1968, the civil rights movement was shaken by the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Despite his advisors warning against a public speech in the racially tense Indianapolis, Indiana, Kennedy nonetheless delivered this heartfelt speech from the back of a pickup truck, which he encouraged the African American people to not commit acts of violence out of hatred, but rather to return home and to pray for the members of King's family. I have some very sad news for all of you, and that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. For those of you who are black, considering the evidence evidently is that there were white people who were responsible. We will have difficult times. We've had difficult times in the past, but we will, and we will have difficult times in the future. It is not the end of violence. It is not the end of lawlessness, and it's not the end of disorder. But the vast majority of white people and the vast majority of black people in this country want to live together want to improve the quality of our life, and want justice for all human beings that abide in our land. With Although many cities experienced racial riots that night, the people of Indianapolis were willing to follow in the nonviolent footsteps of Dr. King and Kennedy. A bit past midnight on June 6, 1968, Kennedy's time as a voice for the oppressed ended while delivering a speech regarding his victory in the California presidential primary at the Ambassador Hotel. Upon exiting the hotel, Kennedy was shot by 24-year-old Sirhan Sirhan. He was surrounded by leaders of the civil rights movement, such as Dolores Huerta, in addition to hundreds of his supporters that consisted of whites, blacks, and Latinos. Before losing consciousness, Kennedy asked if everyone was safe, showing that to the end, Kennedy cared for the lives of his fellow human beings. At 1.44 a.m. on June 6th, RFK passed away, surrounded by his wife, Ethel, and sister-in-law, Jacqueline. Robert Kennedy acted as an ally for minorities that were being marginalized in the United States. He took it upon himself when others couldn't to help and support the leaders of various civil rights movements, and through his leadership, he has left behind a legacy of equality. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance.